Guys, I, I got to ask for forgiveness in advance because I want to, re again, just return to the same story that I had referenced in my, my last vlog. And, uh, and I believe, guys, I'm going to be genuinely honest, I believe the Holy Spirit is all over this story. I believe there are so many uh, prophetic implications that God is going to be having me draw out of this story, not just in this vlog, but in, in vlogs to come. So don't be surprised if we just camp here for a while. And anytime God has me camping in a spot like this, man, I, I just, I, I feel I, like it's, it's, it's a revelation that, that just almost, it's almost causes me to feel emboldened, like to feel, it just, it brings passion. Like I just feel alive again with everything that God has been showing me through this woman's story, the woman with the issue of blood, the woman uh, with the hemorrhage that she's had for 12 years. It's a long time to be in a condition, guys. And like, I just wanna tell you, uh, no matter what might be uh, afflicting you or whatever condition you might find yourself in, guys, the answer is always the same. The answer is always Jesus, the one who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, like Hebrews 13, 8 says. And I just believe that there's something significant about this story. God has been talking to me so much about the importance of faith. And I just want to take a, a moment to say this. I think sometimes we do people a disservice when we don't emphasize the power of faith. And the different times in scripture where Jesus said, your faith made you well, your faith healed you, where a person's faith made a withdrawal on the power that was operating uh, through him and in him. And I know, I know, I, I understand why a lot of times we don't talk about faith is because I know we're not wanting people to feel like they don't have enough. We're trying to protect people in, in a certain way. We're trying to protect emotions where we don't want them uh, to beat themselves up. We don't want them to feel guilty or ashamed in any way. But I don't know about you. I like the challenge of finding out that there's an area for me to grow and I'd rather know what's wrong than dance around the issue. I want somebody to be point blank and honest with me and be like, like, hey, maybe you need to know God more in that area. Maybe you need to go get alone and ask him to open up the scriptures to you about that particular topic or ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that side of Jesus to you because it's the Holy Spirit that's actually making Jesus known. It's the Holy Spirit that is causing this word to come alive, the very word he breathed on. And right now, for me personally, I believe God is breathing on this story. So I, this is in Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. We're not going to read all these verses. I just want to give you context. This story is also in uh, Matthew's gospel. It's, it's in Mark's gospel where we are right now. It's also in Luke's gospel. Um, it's a story that I think a lot of people are familiar with. It's a story that packs a punch. And at the end of the day, you can't get away from the fact that this woman's faith, Jesus said, healed her, made her well. So here's the, here's the thing. I, I believe that we are going to, I, I said in the last vlog, we're going to see an increase in preaching about Jesus again, talking about who he is, what he did, and what he wants to do. By nature, that brings an eruption of faith. Faith can only come by hearing Romans 10, 17 and hearing by the word of Christ. This woman heard about Jesus, it says. Now, she, it, she didn't hear about Jesus because she had the Bible. She wasn't reading any scripture per se. Uh, she may have heard some scriptures in, in, the, in the synagogue through the Old Testament manuscripts and writings and things like that, but the New Testament hadn't yet come out. The writings concerning Jesus weren't yet birthed. So she had heard Jesus' renown and fame was going out. She had heard stories about people being healed, people being delivered. The, what came to her ears, what came to the afflicted's ears, caused faith to be uh, erupt in her, be born in her. Faith came by her hearing, and this is what she did. There's a large crowd following him, and this is what I want you guys to take away, is she made her way through this crowd. Like, th this, this rocks me. Like, the faith in her caused her to push through. And I was thinking about, like, what, what are th things in our life, whether they're distractions or unbelief or busyness or whatever is holding us back, what are we willing to push through because we heard? We heard that God wants to encounter us. We heard that God wants to make us free. We heard that God wants to deliver us. You know, I, I was in services over the weekend, and we're sitting there, we're singing these songs all the time, you know. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. And I remember saying in the one service Sunday night, I'm tired of singing the songs. Like when, when was the last time somebody genuinely saw chains break? And I know that Jesus breaks chains. He did it in my own life. So here's what I want you to know. Faith is not peripheral. Faith is not sitting on the sideline. Faith is aggressive. There's a physical act a lot of times tied to faith. Like faith is, it's it, well, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, violence, the violent 
take it by force. The evidence that this woman believed was she pushed through a crowd. She didn't sit back on her heels, cross her arms and say, well, we'll see. Maybe if Jesus takes notice of me, if Jesus looks my way, maybe I'll be healed. No, she decided, she had this thought in her head that if I could just touch his cloak, I will. That's faith. I will. I will get well. So it reminded me of a story of my own where uh, many years ago, roughly 10 years ago, I put myself in a situation, I paid money, good money to go to this particular conference. I put myself in the seat, the evidence that I believed that what I was after could happen was I paid the money and I put myself in the seat. And I went to this conference because the word deliverance was in it and I was tired of battling a 20 year addiction to pornography. Was always open and honest about the addiction, didn't hide it in any way from my wife or anyone in my life for that matter. I was tired of dealing with it. I put my money where my mouth was. I said, God, I know you can do it. I believe you can do it. You delivered me from drug addiction at 19 years old. Why can't you deliver me from this? In that conference, God set me free. Why? Because faith positions itself. So what do you have to do? What does it look like either for you to position yourself in your alone time, position yourself in the service? How can you position yourself for a God encounter? Because you heard that Jesus wants to have one with you. She heard that he was healing. He would go to entire regions that said all were healed, especially in Matthew's gospel. She made her way through a crowd. She said in her mind, if I could just touch his cloak, I will get well. It wasn't that she touched his cloak that his power went out. That's not what made the withdrawal. That's not what touched him. Her faith touched him. Don't you ever forget that. Faith pleases God. And I believe we will grow in faith the more we take moments to go get away, ask the Holy Spirit, I want you to reveal Jesus to me all over again. We need to see him in new and fresh eyes. Guys, spend time in the Gospels. Go find Jesus again and watch faith erupt inside of you. Ask the Holy Spirit to talk to you about Jesus because it's his favorite person to talk about. It's his favorite topic in all of the earth. Guys, I pray that this blesses you. I am stirred. We're going to continue to talk about this story. Please leave a like, leave a comment. Please get the word out. If these videos are, are blessing you, please share them on social media. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on notifications, and we'll see you guys next time.